You know why I say that? A matter of life that if you follow him to the end, you shall be saved. Because he is the resurrection and the life. It's a matter of death in the sense that as you are following him, though his protection is with you, but I'm telling you, you have exposed your life to danger. And what is the danger? The devil is the danger you have exposed your life. So battle with the devil is the battle of life and what? And death. So following Jesus Christ is a battle. It's, it's like following life, I mean choosing life and death. But the good news is this, if you are with Jesus, if you are standing by Jesus, if you put your trust and your faith in Jesus, then that death will not come across you. The death will go back to the center because the one that is bringing the death, you are going to defeat him. The lion, the bear, you are bringing death to David. They said, David, we are going to kill you today. You are chasing us. You took the sheep out of our hands. We are going to kill you. David said, oh, well, I am also ready to what? To die. But I trust in the living God Almighty. David went after them and did what? Killed the lion. Killed what? The bear. Jesus Christ said, but an hireling and but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd of the sheep, John 10 verse 12, who's on the sheep and not, see the wolf coming and leave the sheep and flee it, and the wolf cutting them and scattered them, not David. Though the sheep was not directly the one of David, but because the sheep belonged to his father, as far as David is concerned, that sheep belonged to what? To him. Hallelujah. You are children of God. And wherever God has given you responsibility, wherever God has placed you as a leader, wherever God has placed you or placed people under you to lead, to guide, automatically those people here belong to God, but you are God representative. And so when you are leading these people, you are leading it as if they all belong to you. They are all originally yours. That is the way you should do. That was the art of David. The art of what? Of a shepherd. David had the art of a shepherd. He saw the lion and the weird coming. He did not do what? He did not run. He chased them. And because he placed his faith upon the living God, what happened? He killed them. May the Lord grant you that grace and that confidence to confront evil, to confront anything called death that is standing before you, and you defeat it in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. God will uphold us to defeat the enemy. Because the lions and the bear, they were the enemy. So God saw in this man, who was taking care of the father's sheep, is having the heart of what? A shepherd. He's caring, he's protective, he's humble. You understand? Humility was found in him. Because the other brothers were at home enjoying themselves now. But he humbled himself. He went to the farm, took care of the sheep of his father. And not only that, David was also known as a man after God's heart because he's not just a shepherd, he's a great warrior. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What I will say is the champion of God. David is God's champion. A fearless man. A man that is fearless. Not that he has power of his own, but he depends on God. A man whose total dependence is placed on the living God. That man was called who? David. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, you know the story of God, David and Goliath. I didn't know to read and read and read for you. He was a warrior. Now look at the testimony that was said about him. When Saul, the Bible says, and it was, I mean, that when Saul disobeyed God, the Spirit of God left Saul because the Spirit of God now was mighty upon the life of David. After Samuel anointed David as king, the Spirit left Saul. And what happened? The Bible says, an evil spirit came into Saul. And then when Saul was possessed, the son of Saul came to him and said, Look, let us look for somebody who can play music very well. And perhaps at the point play music, you'll be well, my Lord. And Saul said, who, who, who do you want to get? Now look what the Bible, the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, 
Verse 18 says, Then asked him one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jason the Bethlehemite that is cooling in plain and a mighty valiant man and a man of war. Hallelujah. David was a mighty valiant man and a man of war. That's why I want to start. He was a great warrior. In other words, this was a man who is bold. This was a man who is fearless. This was a man whose boldness and fearlessness is placed totally on God. Not on his own knowledge, not on his own strength. Because it's a, it's a lie. They call, they call him a lie. A little boy. He was a little boy. Rudy. A little boy. Very little boy. But this little boy trusted God. No matter how small you may be. You will say you are a little girl. You may say you are a little girl. David was a little boy. But David was fearless. He was not afraid of the darkness. He was not afraid of the lion. He was not afraid of the bear. He was not afraid of going into the bush. Why? Because he trusted in who? In the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? He says he's a man of war. I begin to wonder where are these servants? This servant, where are where did this servant see David going to war? Are you listening to me? Where did this servant go? Where did he see David? David is a, I mean, a young man. I believe at that time they don't at the age of David don't go to war. Because from the book of 1st Samuel chapter 17, you discover that <laughs> when when he came to Saul and said, to confront Goliath, because said, Look, you are only a youth, you are too small. And when he even stood before Brad Brad said, ah, so you people don't have anybody to bring before me. Is it this small boy? He was not supposed to go to war. So where did this testimony about David as a valiant man, as a man of war came from? It's a testimony that is placed in the, in the mouth of that servant by the Lord God Almighty. Are you listening to me? God saw in this man a valiant man. God saw in this man a man of war, a man that is bold, a man that is fearless, a man that would depend upon me to the last drop of his blood. That man is called what? David. Hallelujah. A man after God's own heart. A man after God's heart. That was David. He says a valiant man. He had not fought any war that they saw. He only killed lion and bear. And they say what? He's a violent man. And they say what? He's a man of war. And so said, God called that one for me. And they called him. Look at him. This one, violent man. Hallelujah. Because he has the oil of God, which is the anointing of God upon his life. When you have the oil of God upon your life, when you have the anointing of God upon your life, I am telling you, there is no evil that will be able to defeat you. Because that oil is the anointing of God upon your life and the spirit of God upon you. The enemy cannot defeat you. Before the enemy can defeat you, then that oil should be taken away. But as long as that oil is upon your life, the anointing of God is upon you. And you are depending solely on God. The oil and the anointing in you will defeat every power of the enemy. Praise God. David, God saw in him a mighty man. A man of war, a violent man, a man that is fearless. In other words, he was a man of what? Of faith. A man of great faith, I would say. When he came before Goliath, now listen to me. First Samuel chapter 17. Let us see what happened. Let me read it here. Um, <clears throat> sorry. First Samuel chapter 17. Uh, from verse. Um, let me from verse 41. Now listen. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. Can you see that? And Rudy, and of a fair countenance. Very beautiful, very handsome guy. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stars? And the Philistine calls David by his gods. This was a man that says a valiant man. When he was to confront Goliath, what did he use? He came with a rope. What we call catapults. Just a rope, a string, a rope and a stone. And he says he's going to defeat somebody who is very, very tall. You come with a, just a little stone and a rope. And he said he wants to confront somebody that has a very 
Lost sword, very tall. That's Goliath. Goliath. As you say, the children saw say what? Boom, boom, Goliath. Boom, boom, Goliath. A mighty man like that, you came with a rope. Why did he come with a rope and a stone? Because he was what? Fearless. He was what? Fearless. He was what? Bold. He was bold. David was a bold young man. 